gang, it's your boy Platt, back with another episode of Value Spirits. Today I got something pretty interesting, uh, a topic I've been wanting to jump into for a while, and uh, I think you guys will appreciate it. Uh, what I have here, let's read the bottle, it says Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Distilled and Bottled for Trader Joe's. This is one of their line of spirits. Uh, I've been really kind of fascinated with what I've been reading about some of these private label brands. Uh, probably the best example is Costco. Uh, Costco is getting quite a reputation for their own Kirkland brands of spirits and wine. And apparently Trader Joe's is also doing a really good job. So uh, I just happened to be near Trader Joe's the other day and thought I'd stop in and see what they got. And I picked up this bottle for $17.99, under $20. Uh, that, all right, <laughs> that right there is already looking like pretty decent value. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's read what's on the bottle because the labeling laws kind of gives us a really good idea of what we're dealing with here. So it says Highlands Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Highlands is a region in Scotland, um, kind of like, think of it like in France, you have different wine growing regions, Loire, Burgundy, what have you. In Scotland, there's Speyside, Highlands, Lowlands, whatever. Uh, Highlands are known for a lot of the big brands, your Macallan, Glenlivet, or whatever, or Highlands Scotches. So... Uh, single malt, that means it's coming from 100% malted barley, so we, unlike blended scotch, which could have other grains, corn, uh, wheat, rye, what have you, this is 100% uh, malted barley, it says scotch whiskey, and on the bottom it kind of sums that up, distilled, matured, and bottled in Scotland, that's how you get to call it scotch. Also, too, if it is scotch whiskey, it is at least 80 proof and it is at least three years old. So this, so right now we already know, no matter what, we've got three-year-old whiskey, distilled, matured, bottled in Scotland, that's from you know, just uh, malted barley, and uh, in the Highland region. Go a little bit further down, it tells us bourbon cast finish. Now that, uh, one of the trends in Scotch right now is finishing with different barrels. Sherry, port, sherry and port barrels right now are popular. Madero barrels, uh, just to name a few, they are going with bourbon cask. Um, that's kind of been standard for a long time. And then below it says double maturation. And apparently this spends times in time in two different barrels. Uh, it says the first cask is a traditional oak cask. Most likely this is a used bourbon barrel. Uh, here in the U.S., the bourbon ma makers have to, by law, use brand new barrels, brand new charred barrels and they can only use it once. So the bourbon producers here in the U.S. either sell them to like tequila producers in Mexico or to their uh, scotch buddies over in Scotland, and that's probably what was done here. Now the second cask, and this is an interesting part of the story, it says the whiskey is then transferred into first fill bourbon cask. Now what does that mean? Um, again, the bourbon makers use it one time and it goes to Scotland. Even though it has been used before in the bourbon production, the, the Scottish distillers will use the term first fill as the first time we've put scotch into it. So it's been used for bourbon making, but that's the first time scotch is going into it, and they use, call it a first filled barrel. Most likely the barrel used in the first cask was uh, a barrel that's been used multiple times and no longer is a first fill. So they probably do a bulk of the maturation in kind of older used bourbon barrels, and they kind of finish in that first fill uh, barrel that still has a little more of the flavor to give than some older barrels. So that is what we have in here. Uh, down on the bottom it says, Bottled by Hamish Robertson and Company. A little background on them. They've been around uh, since the mid-1850s. They blend and bottle. I think they also do some contract work. Really didn't find a lot on if they own distilleries, pieces of distilleries, contract other distilleries, uh, but they all they do blend and bottle. Most likely it's a company, if you were wanting to, let's say, start your own uh, scotch brand, uh, let's say I want to start Platt Scotch, I would contact them. They would work with distilleries, bottle. If I want to have a blended whiskey, they would do the blending for me, stuff like that. So apparently Trader Joe's is working with them. What I've read about this product is uh, that Trader Joe's through Hamish Robertson will work with some smaller distilleries that are in the Highlands, produce a single malt scotch, and kind of pick up those at a discounted rate. 
Uh, also, too, I've read that this, uh, for the most time that they've had this product, it's generally 10-year-old uh, whiskey. There's no age statement on this, so there could be other uh, ages, but apparently as long as Trader Joe's been doing this, this has been typically a, roughly about a 10-year-old uh, scotch. Compared price-wise with other scotches, uh, Glen Morangi, the standard 10 years, roughly around $40 a bottle. Uh, Edadora runs around $65 bucks for their 10-year, and uh, Glen Caddam is roughly about $54. So at $17.99, if this is 10-year even close, again, that's a pretty good deal. All right, enough about that. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's see if we're getting uh, our value. Our dollar's worth, even though I won that many dollars. All right, let's go ahead and dive in the nose. All right, fairly simple nose, uh, plenty of sweetness. Um, I don't get any peat on this. Um, I got a feeling we're probably not going to run into much peat. Yeah, pretty simple nose. Um, it's not hot on the nose, so uh, even though it doesn't say 80 proof on the bottom, we'll say this is, you know, <laughs> right at 80 proof. I do get some, like, wood polish kind of notes to it. Uh, there's almost a viscosity on the nose, which is kind of weird. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, a lot of sweetness up front really kind of punches that malt sweetness hits. But then the complexity kind of opens up on your palate. Um, yeah, this is not... This, this is a fairly sweet scotch. Um, yeah, it has a little more viscosity, a little more... You know, just, you know, sweet up toward the front of the tongue than I do on a standard scotch. It's very drinkable, I will say this. Um, toward the back, you do get, there, there, there must have been some uh, smoke or peat malt in there. Because uh, you do get a little smokiness toward the back. It's not, you, you know, those Lafroigs and Lagavulins and stuff, you, you feel like you're drinking an ashtray sometimes. That is not this at all. This is just an additional layer. Or once you get past that sweet punch up front, the malt sweetness that comes up front, then you get a little bit, just a hint of smoke and complexity and some of the other. Yeah, it's, it's leaving that, the sweet vanilla wood notes and then a little more complexity you pick up almost some barrel char notes a little bit later. Um, but seriously, for $17.99, um, you know, whether it stylistically sticks with the Highland style or this, that, and the other, just as a good whiskey for $17.99, um, this is pretty solid. Uh, it, it, I, you know, I'm not going to confuse this with, you know, a Macallan 25 or, you know, some of those um, Bonahabin and some of the really, you know, top-notch names. But, you know, Trader Joe's, I think, is hitting the nail on this. And we're giving you a pretty good product at a pretty good price. Uh, part of the reason why they, they can nail that is uh, there's no marketing. They're not, you don't see TV commercials for this stuff. They don't have a marketing staff. Um, they're not necessarily even worried about working with their distributors just bring us our stuff we've contracted with somebody just bring it here we don't have to spend marketing dollars to get distributors work for you we're not trying to get this in any other place so that that saves a lot of cost so they're able to put something like this in a bottle at under 20 bucks but um i i will say this to this you know not a lot of complexity but if you wanted to introduce somebody to single malt whiskeys, uh, you know, single malt scotch specifically, uh, this wouldn't be a bad one because nothing really beats up your palate. Again, that sweetness up front, um, you know, it's very inviting for a new scotch drinker. 
Uh, also, it's, you know, it's 80 proof, so again, it's not going to blow out anybody's palate. Uh, Trader Joe's, I, I think, has impressed me with this. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for videos, please leave me in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.